Hey guys, welcome to the sixth video of my series on exploring YouTube data API and in this video I'll be showing you how to set up your Python project so that you can um, use the YouTube data API in order to take some kind of actions on the behalf of a user like if you want to like a video or comment on a video or change the description or title of one of your videos then how you can do that so till now what we have done is that we have used a simple YouTube API key in order to um, fetch some data from uh, YouTube through the YouTube data API and for that we were using a very simple API key but that mechanism will not be um, very safe if we are trying to deal with some protected resources some private resources of a user for example the permission of a user to like a video or comment on a video so for that kind of cases we need a better authentication framework and that's why we have something called OAuth 2.0 so OAuth 2.0 is an authentication framework which provides a flow to the applications through which they can gain limited access to a user's protected resources so what is uh, protected resources of a user the user's protected resources are um, the permission to like any video permission to comment on any video or the data about a user's own videos or the permission to change the metadata about those videos any kind of thing which is private to a user can be said as users protected resources so if we want to allow any kind of application to take some kind of actions on YouTube on our behalf then what we need to do is that we need to grant some permissions to that application and in order to grant that permission we need a um, we need a very good and tested authentication fram framework and for that we have OAuth 2.0 the best thing about OAuth 2.0 is that it does not require you to provide your login credentials into a particular application so let us take a look at the flow of OAuth 2.0 to understand it better so you can consider this particular side as the consumer side which can be any kind of application you can for now think of it like your python script let's say and on this side we have the service provider which in this case is google the google apis so now what happens is that we will be asking we'll be redirecting the user to provide for authorization and permissions to grant the uh, grant permissions to our application so that it can take some actions on uh, the user's behalf so your application will redirect the user to the service provider for authorization so now through some URL the service provider um, the user is now on service providers page for example you are on the Google login page through some URL now from your application and now you will grant authorization to the, a particular application and then you, the user will be redirected back to your application with some authorization grants that is some permissions that the user has granted to your application and all these things that is happening here is being done through the uh, service providers website which is the Google website um, and now once your application has got all the uh, permission it has been granted the access to all the private resources now it can ask the um, Google server to grant it some access tokens and once those access tokens are provided now a connection can be created and your application can now take actions on your behalf so in this way the complete OAuth 2.0 flow works and the best thing here is that the user didn't need to provide any kind of secret information to the application everything that was done um, in order to provide permissions was done through the service provider by opening the website of the service provider so you'll be able to get a better understanding of it when I will uh, be showing you an example so now um, let us see how Google handles the OAuth 2.0 flows so Google API supports several OAuth 2.0 use cases for example you might have a web application you might be having um, a static website with some client-side JavaScript written which needs the YouTube data API that can be said as client-side flow the um, the web application one with the backend support can be said as server-side flow and let's say you have an application which is simply running on your desktop then in that case that is called installed application flow and lastly there is something called device flow which is for devices with limited input capabilities such as game consoles and video cameras so these are four kind of um, subcategories of the OAuth flows that Google supports 
and the one which we need for simple Python scripts is this one, the installed application flow. So this is what we'll be using. Now the next thing to note here is that we have to provide some scopes of permissions to the um, to the Google server. So basically, um, when I ask to take some actions on a user's behalf, I have to tell which permissions do I need from the user. So that is called scope. So uh, in our case, if you want to access the YouTube data API, then we want to take this particular scope if I want to manage the YouTube account on a user's behalf. So if you want to manage the user's account on a user's behalf, you need to use this particular scope. That is, you have to specify that you want permissions only for this particular action. So these are the scopes. So now let us try to see how do we, um, how do we allow our Google project to use the um, OAuth flow. So in order to do that, you have to click on credentials. So first of all, you have to go to the dashboard of your Google project, uh, of course. Then you have to click on credentials in which, um, as you can see, your existing credentials, you have some API key, which we have created in the last few videos. And the new thing that you have to do here is that you have to click on create credentials. You have to click on OAuth client ID. So what is OAuth client ID? OAuth client ID will request user content consent so that the user can access so that app can access the user's data. So for that, we need the OAuth client ID. So this is basically allowing us to be able to use the OAuth flow for our application. So for that, we can simply select our application type as other because we are using a simple Python script and let me name it as other client to create. So this is my client ID. This is my client secret, but right now I do not need them. So as you can see that I have already created one, um, one more um, client ID. This is the one we just got created. So in order to use them, you have to just click on this download button. You can simply download a JSON file of your client secret and then you have to simply put it in your uh, project folder. So for example, I have renamed that file as client underscore secret and I have put it in the same folder in which I have my Jupyter notebook in which I am writing the code. So in this way, you can just put your client secret file and once that is done, we are ready to go. So now from API client, API client dot discovery import build. So this is the thing which we use for generating a um, API resource which can talk with any particular Google API. And then the new thing that we need here is the Google o auth auth lib uh, project in which we have to use the um, installed app flow. So from Google auth auth lib dot flow import installed app flow. So this is what we need. And now we are ready to specify our client secret file. So client secret file path is just in our project folder. So we can simply write the name of that file client secret dot JSON, then the scopes. Scopes is a list in which you have, can provide all the scopes that you need um, for your application. So the scope that I have is this one. So let me copy and paste it here. So yeah, um, some tab also got there. So in this way, I have specified my client secret file and the scopes for which I need the permission from the user. And now it's time to um, run the authentication flow. So for that, first of all, you have to cre create a flow object installed app flow dot from client secrets file in which I pass the client secret file and scopes. So once that is done, now I have to write credentials is equal to flow dot run console. So in this way, I am running the flow. So here I created the flow object and now I am running the flow and I in, in the return, I will be getting the credentials once that flow is complete. And finally, I will be creating a YouTube resource object by using the build function in which I have to specify YouTube. I have to specify that I need to use version three 
and now credentials is equal to credentials till now we had been giving we had we have been giving a developer key here but for the first time we'll be giving the credentials so we'll be using the credentials argument for creating this um, youtube resource so yeah this is a flow let us run it so we got um, a url to visit so we are going to uh, click on this URL to authorize this application. So now it is asking me to choose one of my accounts which will be authorizing it. So now I am going to choose my YouTube account and now look at that. It is asking me to provide permission to this particular application to manage my YouTube account. So I'm just going to allow it and it's success and I have to just copy this and put it here and enter and yeah it's done so my youtube resource object got created so in this way i have successfully created um, an oauth 2.0 flow and i have created a resource object and now it has the scopes it has the permission to manage my youtube account so yeah this is how it is done and in the next video we'll be seeing some different activities that we can do from here which is how to like a video comment a video or change the description and title of any video so that's it from this video and if you still have any doubts, you can put them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.